Welcome to our lecture online. So let's take a look at Kepler's second law. The second law states that equal areas are covered in equal amount of time. But that doesn't mean a lot unless you look at the diagram. What Kepler realized was when an object was far away, it moved slower, and when it was close to the sun, it moved faster. But what he also realized was that the area swept out by an invisible line between the sun and the object, this being the Earth, for example, that area swept out in the same amount of time was equal regardless of where it was in its orbit. So the areas swept out are equal for the same elapsed time. So if we then say that the dA, the small amount of area that's covered under small amount of time, is going to be equal to one half the base times the height. Essentially, this is a triangle. And so it's one half the base, which is r times d theta. That's a small angle right here, d theta times r. Or dA equals one half r squared d theta. Or what we're after was that the change of the area over time, which is therefore one half r squared times d theta dt, is equal to a constant. And that is essentially Newton's second law. Since we can express d theta dt as its angular velocity, it can also be written as dA dt is equal to 1 half r squared omega. Or since the tangential velocity is equal to r times omega, we can replace omega by v over r, and we can write that dA dt is equal to 1 half r times vt. Now this equation is the most useful because you know that this is a constant, so the product of these two is a constant. So as r becomes bigger, v must become smaller. When r becomes smaller, v becomes bigger, so that the product is always the exact same amount. And that's, in essence, the second law of Kepler.